three ways to create motion blur inside Premiere Pro. Let's go. So the first way is by using something called the transform effect. You come down to the effects panel over here and search for transform. Oop, there it is. Drag that baby on. Bam. Now, what a lot of people do when they scale in and out is they use the position properties and the scale properties. So they create a keyframe over here, move a little bit forward in time and then zoom in on this guy's face. And when you play through it, it works, but there's just no motion blur. So you're going to do the same thing, but inside of the transform effect, and you're going to see the difference. So I'm going to go to the beginning of my clip, set a keyframe on position as well as scale, go forward five, 10 frames. I'm going to zoom right in on this guy and on his face. Now, if we play through, you won't see any change in terms of motion blur. That's because you need to uncheck this use composition shutter angle speed button, and then you need to add in your own shutter angle speed. This works in the sense of zero is no motion blur if you go all the way up to 360 in that option you'll get the most amount of motion blur what works best i found is 180 that's usually the norm for the most natural looking motion blur i'm going to put 180 in as i scrub through now you can see there's motion blur on the side of my screen and again if i pull these keyframes in any closer it's going to speed up the animation which will give me more motion blur as well the second way to get motion blur is by using an effect called directional blur all right so i have a clip here i've sped it up in the middle as you can see, and we're gonna add some directional blur onto the point where the camera moves really quickly. The thing with directional blur is you can only add it onto a clip where the camera is panning left or right, and I guess moving up or down too, but it has to be in some sort of direction. Point is it can't be zooming in or out. You have to use something like After Effects or the Transform Effect for that to work. And what I'm gonna do just to avoid any problems is I'm just gonna nest this clip because sometimes when you do t time remapping, you run into a lot of problems by adding on extra effects. All right, so now we're gonna add the directional blur. I'm gonna drag it straight onto my clip and I'm gonna find the point where the clip is at its peak, where it's moving its fastest. It's more or less around here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change my blur length. I'm gonna push that thing right up. I'm gonna push it to like 35, let's do 35. And now you can see the, the camera has blurred, except it's in the wrong direction. That's really easy to change. All we need to do is change our direction property here. And as I'm turning it, you can see the direction of my blur changing. 90 degrees will be left to right. Zero degrees would be top to bottom. So you play around with it, depending on which way your camera is panning and moving. You want to match that with the direction property over there. All right, so at this point, I'm going to set keyframes. My direction I'm going to keep, that's not going to change, but my blur length is going to change depending on when the camera is moving, how fast it is moving. So at the peak of its powers and when it's moving the most, I'm going to set my blur length to 35 and then I'm going to come back to where it starts and I'm going to take it down to zero. I'm going to go to the end of the clip where it started to slow down and also go back to zero. What I like to do is highlight all of these keyframes and choose Bezier. It just smooths out the motion. Now when I play through it, you have some motion blur onto your footage. Only problem is you can see we have a bit of black on the edges. The only way to get around that is just to scale up your clip until the black parts disappear on the left and the right. Now if I play through it, there we go. And the third way to add some motion blur onto your clip is by using something called the echo effect. So we go down to the effects panel and add in something called echo onto our clip. This only really works with footage where there's lots of motion. Um, so this won't work on all types of footage, but I'm hoping that it works on this clip that I've found. What you want to do is as soon as you put it on, you'll notice that your clip gets really bright. You can change that by coming to this echo operator dropdown, click on it and we'll change it to screen. That's going to make it seem a little bit more normal. Then what you want to do is change this echo time in seconds to a positive number. So I like to keep it at a number that's really low. I found something like 0.02 works really well. Uh, if we play through it now, you can see a bit of motion blur is added onto the effect. And what I found is a very low number, but then also pulling the decay down to about 0 0.5. It just doesn't make it so obvious that there is an actual echo on the video. And this, again, this doesn't work with all types of videos. So it's just a very simple way of adding some sort of motion blur onto your footage. But if it works for you, use it. If not, then use one of the other two methods. I hope that this video helped you. If it did, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button too and uh, check out some other videos on the channel you can see them down there up there i don't know wherever cool peace out guys